Miller coming in now, there is a possibility that he wouldn't recognise any newborn youngster as his own. Uh, and, and consequently may actually attack or, and severely injure and at the worst case kill any newborn youngster. Is there anything you can do to try and stop that happening? Well, there's, there's huge amounts that we are doing and we will do to, to, to mitigate that potential risk. Uh, for instance, the, the way that we introduce the gorillas, the careful way that we introduce the gorillas, the way we monitor them, but the most important thing has been the choice of the new male gorilla that's coming in. We wanted to make sure that he was a, uh, a gorilla that wasn't too aggressive, wasn't too old, was still juvenile enough that would want to play with the, the other the females in the group, and also one that's, that's very well socio socially orientated and one that's already used to having lots of youngsters around him. Why is it worth taking the risk? Why do you need uh, a male gorilla to bring order amongst the females? That's the whole thing. It's bringing order amongst the females. If there's no male in a gorilla group and it's just the females, then eventually that female group will break down. The relationships between the females are very complex, and without a male to keep them in order, then actually the, the, their relationships will become increasingly acrimonious, increasingly aggressive, and the end result would probably be that we would have to keep the three females separated in time. And if there was a youngster born, and the young animal was brought up in a group without a male, that animal himself would, would not know how to behave as a gorilla. The importance of having a male in the gorilla group to teach uh, gorilla etiquette, to teach gorilla manners, but more especially to keep that group cohesive, is absolutely vital for the long-term welfare of this gorilla family. Well, how ethical is it in 2010 to be keeping gorillas in these small enclosures? Uh, the enclosure themselves are well suited to all the needs of the gorilla and it's ethically imperative that we keep these populations and keep these families of gorillas in zoos. They provide a safety net, a, a real safety insurance population for the diminishing number of gorillas that there are in the wild. 